Let's go! Kayshawn Booty is back, baby. His first 100-yard game last week. Are we going to see more of this, or was that just a flash in the pan? Now, I know a lot of us have been talking about how much better Jaden was last week versus, versus Florida, but the truth is, a big reason why he was better is because Kayshawn made some rough throws look a lot better than they actually were. Boom, I'm looking at you, an early boom. I know you've already liked and subscribed and all the good stuff. Don't forget to check out my new SEC channel. We are approaching 1,000 subscribers there. So let's break down this catch from the legendary 300-plus yard performance. Now, funny thing is Max locked on to Kayshawn right here when he should have been looking for, to me, the greatest LSU wide receiver of all time. In fact, the clear number one option on this team, Bruh. according to Coy Moore, is Coy Moore. Ha, ha, ha. But uh, that's not here nor there. Anyway, you see right here, the ball is actually thrown behind Kayshawn, okay? Now, let's bring it back and look at what he does after this. Not only does he catch it, he pirouettes and is able to keep his balance and fall forward for an extra five or so yards. And later in the game, as many of you know, he was able to spin off a tackle like that for the game-winning touchdown. So now we get to this performance versus Florida. And as you can see, we're already down 7-0. to This is a third and eight. So if we don't convert this, uh, you know, we're punting the football here. And I'm not going to show you the different angle just for the sake of brevity, but Kayshawn was actually wide open right here, okay? And Jaden decided to not throw it. Instead, he bought time in the pocket. They didn't even rush him. They said, look, we're going to force you to actually throw the football. And this would have been a punt had Kayshawn not made this catch. And as you could see, as you guys saw in the initial film study, Jaden doesn't throw the absolute best ball. He just kind of guides it, and he's fading away. And this ball is a wobbler. And yes, Kayshawn is wide open, and he should catch it. But what makes it even more impressive is that he makes both of these players somehow miss, and he falls forward for these extra yards. So that was phenomenal wide receiver play. Kayshawn should have got the football early, but he kept going and then eventually got open. But it gets even better better and I love this uh these are uh two recruiting staffers I think this is Jordan Arsement and Bobby Barham that's obviously really good you got some other staffers right here look at Jamar Kane's like look at what that boy did baby let's go I love it and then we get to here once again we need to be better on early downs converting a few third and sixes or longer and now it's third and a mile we still have Kayshawn in the slot right here and it's kind of sort of the same thing here. But Kayshawn wasn't open early. Uh, there was a small window over the middle to throw this football to Kayshawn. But Jaden obviously rolls out to the right. We have really good protection. Good job by John Emery getting a chip to help out Emery Jones there. And as you can see, this ball is a wobbler. And Kayshawn gets destroyed. And honestly, I feel as if this was the best catch of the year thus far. Okay, the hardest thing about throwing a dig, though, is that if you're late, this player can intercept it. Ironically, Anthony Richardson had a pick like this versus USF where he was looking right and then threw the dig late. So the dig was open here to Kayshawn. So instead, he rolls out and then waits till Kayshawn gets into this window, and then he rips it, okay? Once again, it is a wobbler. Look at that catch. Look at how this ball left his hand. Okay, that is coming directly out of his hand. Look at how difficult of a catch that is, though. I mean, my goodness gracious. A knuckleball, he gets crushed, and his head snaps on the turf right here. Bang! And he's still able to make that catch. Bum! I'm looking at you. Yes, you. So, versus Florida, Kayshawn made those extremely difficult catches. Now, the second was far harder than the first, but the truth is, Jaden is a really flawed 
passer and for our passing game to work, we are going to continue to need our wide receivers to make difficult grabs. That's just who Jaden is. Now, his throwing did get better, as you saw from the hour-long film study we did from Chicago. As you saw, that was just a clip from uh, the, the, the film study itself. But... You know, we, we've seen enough of Jaden to know that the balls just aren't going to be perfectly thrown. And you need to make catches such as this one. Remember versus Ole Miss, he was able to catch that in breaking route and still able to turn and get upfield. Yes, this is more on Jaden than it is Kayshawn, but it shows you how important it is for our alpha wide receivers. Remember, before the year began, we were talking about how this wide receiver group was the best in all of college football versus Florida. That I felt as if that was the first game where the LSU receivers, all of them, were playing at the tip top of their capabilities, which is a far cry from their last road game versus Auburn, where we were just getting clamped down everywhere. And that was just one of the many issues with the LSU passing attack. And you'll see it from this angle. Once again, it's more on Jaden, but this is who he is as a thrower. The ball isn't going to more often than not be where it needs to be. This ball needs to be on his face mask or ahead of him. But you still got to catch it, right? So that is where we are as an LSU passing attack. And Kayshawn played like Kayshawn normally plays versus Florida. Now, will that continue? I hope so. I do think that there is a mini battle that exists in the position in the story of Kayshawn Booty. And that battle is if the staff can figure something out with the guys that they got here. I, I can tell you one thing. If I could talk to, to Dembrock right now, yeah, the pop passes aren't going to do it. Okay. <laughs> I think that that's going to get him engaged into the game. It's not. You need to get the ball in the kid's hands. He needs to get some separation, and he needs to play like he wants to be a first-round pick. But I, I still believe in him. Bum, I'm looking at you. Yes, you. So, as you guys saw, that was friend of the channel, Van Lathan, who joined our PHL live stream last week. Don't forget our live stream schedules. We love hanging out with all our PHL Nation viewers okay and don't forget you could join our patreon baby patreon.com slash lsu football where you know you get some extra film studies you get obviously the advanced guide reports for every team and i have one coming out tomorrow about the 2022 Ole miss rebels now a lot of you remember this game obviously uh, we started off the live stream with it and we're going to end the live stream with Kayshawn putting together one of the best wide receiver performances you will ever see I don't care that Ole Miss's defense was bad I don't care about any of that the it was just pouring rain it was such a juxtaposition in weather from the first half to the second half and of course last year LSU couldn't play Ole Miss because well Kayshawn was hurt he could not terrorize Lane Kiffin for the second consecutive year so hopefully we do see another 300 plus yard performance from Kayshawn now, something else that is very important to keep in mind involving Kayshawn Booty is there is actually a lot going on in his life right now. Um, it's been, it been great. It's been a big transition, you know, um, kind of knowing that every day I get to go home and be a blessing, like I'm ready to get home. Just just spending time with him, it's kind of big. Like I say, I was laying down on the sofa this morning, he was sleeping, kind of shed a little bit of tears just looking at him and like, real like i love him so much so it's great it's a great film so yeah Kayshawn became a dad uh, just a few weeks ago it was the reason why he missed the new mexico game and obviously Kayshawn is a lock for me to be a first round pick in next year's draft because in large part because of this game right he had an early breakout age which is something that a lot of draft analysts look for and he obviously has all the elite traits you want from a player and there have been a lot of good pieces on the real bit da, 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 the rehabilitation process Kayshawn has had to go through to get back on the field for LSU and obviously this was another case where a ball was slightly thrown behind him but a lot like the very first play he was able to break this tackle essentially doing the same move and then of course housing 
this ball, which is absolutely positively ridiculous that not only he did that, but look at how smooth he broke these last couple of tackles, okay? Uh, make this guy miss, make both of these guys miss, and he still doesn't fall down. And I'll never forget this little behind-the-back thing right here. I mean, he just made that look way too easy. Ha, ha, ha. The more I have watched LSU, including when LSU's pass attack actually got going versus Florida, a lot of it falls on the arms, I say the arms, a lot of it falls on the shoulders of the play calling and once again, Jaden Daniels ball placement. I cannot state this enough. The LSU wide receivers did play better versus Florida. And right now on Patreon, I actually cut a film study on a ball that actually uh, led Kayshawn and it was a slant over the middle versus Florida that he broke a few tackles and it's amazing what an accurately thrown football on a slant can do. But the thing is, Kayshawn is still good enough, despite absolutely perfect ball accuracy, to still be able to go out there and make those types of special plays. And that's what we had been waiting on. Now we get into what LSU will play this next weekend versus Ole Miss. Now, I will say this. Um, I do think a lot of LSU's success this past Saturday was really good offense, was, you know, BTJ making amazing catches, Dre making amazing catches, Malik, and obviously Kayshawn as well. Um, but I, I do want to give a lot of credit to the Florida coaching staff for pretty much putting out one of the worst SEC defensive uh, schematic schemes I've ever seen. I mean, it's not last year man coverage on every snap LSU bad, but they are bad. Bad. They look lost. They give away a lot of very easy things. Even, you know, the third and three uh, that Keishon actually dropped, uh, was the ball was a little hot. But even then, there was three separate receivers for LSU that were open that would have converted that. Florida's defense was really, really, really bad. Now, Ole Miss's defense isn't that, that, that much better, but they're not going to blow assignments and just play bad defense like Florida did last week. So that is obviously going to be absolutely huge for LSU this next weekend. Yes, the passing attack can continue to play really well, but it's not going to be given to you the same way that Florida gave LSU a lot of their points. He is truly special. And uh, as you'll see here, once again, I mean, this is just really ridiculous wide receiver play. I hope this continues because this guy is truly a treat and we only have six-ish more games left of the Kayshawn Booty experience. So comment down below and don't forget the party will continue with all our live streams, pregame, all that good stuff. And yeah, don't forget Patreon, all the good stuff. All, everything's linked down below. It is Power Hour LSU Bam. And tonight, oh, it's tacos, night three. Let's go. The LSU legendary photographer, Chris Parent, uh, in the background. And uh, tonight, what are we doing? Oh, I was supposed to save the food for the end. We're doing tacos again. Let's go.